I can remember always wanting to be a wife and mom. From the age of 12, I was already inspired to start praying for the husband that God would give me. I was also very blessed to grow up in a godly family with a mom who was often at home, almost always in fact. And so even though I was very ambitious, it followed that I really wanted the same for my own family and my own children one day. I love children. So when I was in grade nine, we had to carry baby dolls around for two weeks as a life skills exercise. Everybody carried a baby. I carried twins. And this carried through into my personal life. I also used to serve in every kid's ministry that I could get my hands on. And so it just follows naturally that God created a big, beautiful space in my heart for children. I met my husband doing youth ministry and he also has a completely natural connection with kids. And so it was with great excitement that we started a family eight years into our marriage. We fell pregnant immediately with Josh and his birth was just such a joyous and blessed occasion that we decided there and then that we wanted to have more children. And so a year after having Josh, we started trying for our next baby and we waited. We waited a year and then another year. And then we realized that this just wasn't happening and we decided to seek help. What followed from our first doctor's visit was a few tests which really revealed nothing. And so we started to do a few non-invasive procedures, but not getting anywhere, we eventually ended up doing IVF for the first time in 2010. Despite the fact that it was a difficult time and it was challenging because of needles and procedures, it was a time filled with hope. And so it was pretty devastating to receive the news that it had been unsuccessful. And I can remember lying on my bed that night, really crying out to the Lord and saying, Lord, I need to hear from you because I don't think I'd really heard from the Lord yet at that point. And the Lord gave me Isaiah 44. And what stood out for me in the scripture is the fact that I'm chosen. And the fact that God said that He can pour water on dry ground and it speaks about offspring the fact that He will pour His Spirit on my offspring. This just sealed it for me. I felt that the Lord had really spoken and we sent out a message to everyone we knew to say that we were okay and we decided to stop doing IVF. What followed was many months, more cycles, a lot of waiting, and I had to be very patient but no babies were coming. In fact, our process took seven years in total. During this time, I was encouraged by that scripture in Isaiah 54, where it speaks about a barren woman, and then it encourages her to enlarge the place of her tent and let the curtains of her habitations be stretched out. And so this was actually a very fruitful time for us. Brett and I got really involved in serving because we only had one child and because he was already getting quite big. We had the capacity to serve and love and welcome people into our home. So our serving grew, but what also grew was that a massive desire in our hearts for children. Not just a few, we wanted a lot more children. I kept going back to that first scripture that the Lord gave where He spoke about offspring. So I really felt that the Lord had said offspring because He meant offspring, um, but the offspring weren't coming. And so two years later, four years into this process, we decided to do IVF again. And so what followed was more cycles of IVF, more expense, more pain and complications as well, but no children. I believe that the Lord allowed us to go through this time because it really gave me a deep understanding of what women go through, women with infertility and women who go through IVF and it helped me to walk alongside other women who were going through the same thing. Despite the difficulty, I can just remember every time I went through a procedure, I could feel the Lord speaking to me and saying to me that scripture from Psalm 3, the Lord is a shield around me, He's my glory and the lifter of my head. And so despite the difficulty, I experienced the love and the power of God with us. God brought some amazing women into my life during that time and one evening stands out in particular. There were four of us that gathered and at the time three of us were going through IVF and we got together to pray. 
Now, we got together with all the kinds of things that ladies need when they get together. So there were cupcakes and goodies to eat and coffee, but we didn't touch a single thing that evening because God arrived in such a powerful way. Um, and what followed was just an incredible prayer time, um, just a time of praying with each other, for each other and over each other, speaking truth and prophesying. And yeah, it was like something really settled in the spiritual realm that night. It was the most incredible time. We went on till late that evening and we left with such expectation in our hearts. So it was just after this time that we decided to end our IVF journey and God led us to apply to adopt. And this was just also an incredible time as God showed us His heart on adoption and as the space in our hearts just grew even bigger for more children. I remember another prayer time just after this, it was at an Evergreen facilitator's training and we were going around the table sharing what our greatest disappointments were. And almost every lady at the table shared that their disappointment was that they were not falling pregnant. And I remember that what followed was a pretty simple prayer just, we just stood together and agreed in the spirit. Shortly after that, within two months, three of us were pregnant. We fell pregnant naturally with Hannah. It happened in the most unideal time of our lives. We were working too hard, we were socializing too much, and we were not sleeping. In fact, it actually happened during a month. I was actually already pregnant with Hannah when I had an endometrial scraping. But God had a plan and His plan was going to prosper. And so this beautiful little girl, Hannah, was born on the 19th of April in 2016. And the Lord gave me a word for her while I was pregnant. And He said, it was that scripture from Zephaniah, which says, I will take great delight in her. And she really is such a delight and joy in our home. And this journey, despite how hard it was and how long it took, taught us a few things. The first thing that it taught us was that every baby is a miracle. Joshua, our first son who's now nine, is a miracle. And so is Hannah, and so is each and every child. It's important for us to hear God for ourselves because He has a unique journey in store for us. I also learned that it's really important to stand together with other people in prayer because there's power when people get together. I need to also report that two years after that incredible prayer time with my friends that we had that evening, we went from having four children between us to having 10 children. Some of them are adopted and some of them are biological children. I learned that it's only over when God says it's over. He holds everything in His hands for our good and for His glory. Yeah.